In today's video, Mandalorian bounty hunters storm the Anchorhead Cantina as we revisit the classic Star Wars miniatures game from Wizards of the Coast. Well, hi everybody, it's Lee from skirmishwargames.com, and as we're filming this, this is October 22nd, 2019, which means uh, the premiere of The Mandalorian on uh, the new Disney streaming channel is only about a month away. So in honor of that, we're breaking out the old uh, Star Wars miniatures game from Wizards of the Coast, which I think ran from about 2004 to 2010. So this tabletop collectible miniatures game was preceded by uh, Star Wars miniatures battles from West End Games, and then followed by Star Wars Imperial Assault and Star Wars Legion from Fantasy Flight Games. So this was uh, kind of done around uh, 2004 to 2010, and uh, they had different series of miniatures coming out uh, to kind of coincide with uh, various uh, movie releases. and. Um, then 2010, I think they just kind of gave up on the license, and uh, here we are. But still, it's uh, kind of a neat little game, pretty easy to learn, card-based, D20 system, and uh, we're going to, just for nostalgia's sake, because we have uh, some Mandalorian figures, we're going to do a little game here, and then maybe a larger game later on, maybe even featuring our big AT-AT colossal figure. So we'll see how that goes. But for today, we're going to do a little skirmish here in the Anchorhead Cantina, Featuring a Mandalorian bounty hunter who looks a lot like Jango Fett, but is actually a Mandalorian bounty hunter for the purposes of this game. And then a Mandalorian gunfighter who must be like his cousin or something like that. And then uh, Vigo of uh, the Black Sun Crime Syndicate, his bodyguard, a bartender, and then uh, kind of just uh, a local thug. So Lynn is going to be playing the Mandalorian bounty hunter and the Mandalorian gunslinger. So Lynn, why don't you tell me a little bit about your Mandalorians here? So the Mandalorian Bounty Hunter has hit points of 120, a defense of 19, attack of plus 13, and damage of 20. He has some special abilities, which is flight, which lets him avoid obstacles. He has Bounty Hunter plus 4, which he, if he is attacking any unique characters, he gets plus 4 on his attack. So when he's closing in on Vigo, he'll get a bonus on his attack. Yes. And then he's also got a double attack. Instead of moving, he can do two attacks. Yeah. And his point value, if you look up here, his point value is 47. So uh, the Mandalorian Gunslinger to his side there only has a point value of 17. And that's still pretty high for uh, soldier type characters. So he's uh, pretty expensive and 120 hit points is formidable. Yes. And then the Gunslinger? The Gunslinger only has 50 hit points. His defense is 17. He has an attack of plus 9 and he has a damage of 10. But he's got some interesting special abilities. He's got one called Coming Attack, which is plus four attack and plus 10 damage against an enemy who has not been activated on this round. He's also got Deadly Attack, which scores a critical hit on a 19 or a 20, not just a 20. He's got a double attack, so he can attack twice instead of moving, and he's got to evade as long as a character is not in an adjacent square, he can roll an 11 and evade the attack. Yeah, so normally in this game, uh, a character when it's activated gets two actions, move, attack or move and move or uh, attack and move but in his case uh he can attack twice and i will point out that this mandalorian gunslinger is actually a lady gunslinger so yes she be, is yeah so that's a she there and that must be like his uh, cousin or whatever she's learning the ropes and for their mission today they're uh, entering the anchorhead cantina shortly after closing they're going to try to track down and eliminate uh, vigo of the black sun syndicate this is his bodyguard here uh, this guy, this uh, Aqualish assassin, is going to be the bartender. And then we have uh, a Rodian blaster for hire. And he's just kind of a local thug who uh, is probably just going to be a meat shield. The uh, assassin and the uh, thug, the Rodian blaster for hire, don't really have that many special abilities. The uh, bartender has grenades, so that might come into play. The uh, bodyguard, if she's adjacent to Vigo, she can take the hit for him. She also has evade, so she can evade attacks as long as someone's not adjacent to her. She's got a, uh, a whip with a two-square range, and it causes paralysis if it hits a character, and that character um, hasn't been activated already, um, but the character does get a save. And then Vigo, he's pretty nimble. So uh, he's got evade, stealth, uh, microvision, which is plus four attack to targets within six squares, and advantageous attack. Plus 10 damage against an enemy who has not been activated. And then twin attack, which means he can do part of his movement, then shoot, then move again. And uh, he also can fire twice. So he's an acrobat. He kind of jumps around, shoots, dies behind tables, does a lot of Matrix-type stuff. So he does kind of look like Neo there. 
So for this scenario, the bar is just closed and uh, they're kind of counting the cash and cleaning up and uh, shutting off the lights and then through the entrances, through the front door and the back door, come a couple of Mandalorians. And then, uh, yeah, violence ensues. Okay, so we're playing a 64 point game today. I guess a standard game is kind of like 100 points. But uh, when you add it up, the two Mandalorians came out to 64. So then I picked 64 worth of uh, gangsters to match. And because this uh, gameplay area is kind of claustrophobic, that's probably going to be just fine. And you may notice we're using actually a Star Wars Imperial Assault uh, sort of neoprene mat just because it's kind of colorful and uh, it has the Anchorhead Cantina. So that seemed like a good place to stage the battle. So I'm going to go ahead and set the gangsters sort of in their... Uh, places according to their profession and then uh, the mandalorians will come in so there's actually several entrances to the cantina here this here i think is the main entrance there is a rear entrance here kind of by this conveyor belt and there's another rear entrance here um, sort of through the junk pile and i think another one here which might be a secret entrance to the boardroom but we're just going to use the front entrance the conveyor entrance and or the uh, junkyard entrance and the mandalorians can pick uh, where they want to come in, how they want to come in. But before that happens, we're going to place our uh, gangsters. So Vigo, the boss, is kind of hanging out in the boardroom. He's uh, counting the money. The uh, Rodian blaster for hire, he's going to kind of hang out in a central area. He's having a smoke. He's supposed to be sweeping up, but he's having a smoke. The Aqualish assassin, who's uh, moonlighting as a bartender, he's uh, behind the bar. And the bodyguard is over here in the security center, and she is... Uh, sort of checking out the cameras and notices a couple of uh, shadowy figures entering after closing. So, uh, you know, that's a cause for alarm. Will a cantina staff be able to slow them down, be able to prevent them from uh, succeeding in their mission? I don't know. Time will tell. So where are you going to place the Mandalorians? You have three choices. There's the front entrance, sort of this back entrance here, and then the, the uh, junkyard entrance, I guess, through the trash pile. So I'm going to send the gunslinger out back. She likes to come in and sneak around. And then my bounty hunter is going to come a little more toward the front, but back entrances are good for when you're staking out. So he doesn't want to come in through the front door of the saloon. He's going to come in through the conveyor belt area there. And that must be like the maybe delivery. the trash disposal. Oh, maybe that's deliveries. It yeah. Could be deliveries. Or maybe if someone, if a Jedi comes in and chops someone's arm off, then they throw it on the conveyor and it kind of just takes it out to the, uh, you know, the pig pen or something could be okay so that's good so now that everyone is placed we uh, roll for initiative and then the person who wins initiative will determine uh, which team they get to choose which team activates first for the first turn and the interesting thing about this one is you on your activation you can move two of your guys so in my case that's all of them but in his case uh, there he's got four so he would get, if he got initiative, he would get to activate two, and then I would get to go, and then he would get to activate yeah. two. Now, if I got activation first, I get to move my guys, and then he gets to move all of his guys. Right. All right, initiative. I got a one. That doesn't bode well, and you have a 12. Okay, so who's going first? I will let you move first. Okay. Okay, in the practice game we did, the very first practice game, actually the gunslinger was, I think, coming in this entrance. I just blasted the poor um, bartender before he could do anything. So in this case, I think the bartender is going to get the hell out of Dodge. And so if he's jumping over the bar, that counts as two moves. His movement is six. Two, three, four. And then the door opens because when you come up adjacent to a door, it opens. But you have to stop. Okay, so when he stops at that door, it opens, but he has to stop. Now he can do a second move. So one, two, because he's moving diagonal. Three, he can move through a friendly character. And four, and then this door opens because he's standing next to it. What other character are you going to move this activation? Okay. You can move one more. Yeah. So let's see. All right, I'm going to move the security guard because she's kind of in this back area with a lot of doors, and it's going to take her quite a while to work her way through them. So because she's adjacent to this door, it's open. So she can move one. That's her first movement. And then that opens this door, but she's got to stop. Now she's on her second movement, and she can move one, two, three. That opens this door, but she's got to stop. So that's her two movements, and um, that is my two activations. And I will mark them as such. The Aqualish Assassin, Moonlighting as a Bartender. 
So time to go in and check out the lay of the land. I'm gonna start out with the gunslinger. She's pretty formidable on her own, but the bounty hunter is, uh, he's like, what is it? 47 points to her 17. So she's standing by in a door, so it is open. So one, two, three, she's gonna stop for the door. One, two, three, and then that door is open. And then that is her movement for this one. She hasn't yeah. found anybody to shoot yet, but she's working her way in. Yeah, presumably they did some recon or had a spy coming in for a few drinks earlier, or they sent in a drone. So they know people are roaming around, but they may not know exactly where they are. Okay, so then uh, now it's the bounty hunter. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and that opens that door. And then the second movement, one, two, and that'll open that door. So the bounty hunter's gonna stay right there because he is out of movement. So now you have your other two guys. All right. So now in my uh, second set of activations, I have the Rodian Blaster for Hire, and I have Vigo, and uh, yeah, it looks like the Mandalorians are closing in, so Vigo better decide. Is he gonna earn his keep and go after the Mandalorians, or is he gonna <laughs> hightail it out of there? Well, he might seek a more defensible position. Those Mandalorians will take out these guys in one shot, and Vigo might last a little longer, but he can't really just stand there and uh, toe to toe and fire away because they'll just they'll blow him away. He doesn't have the damage or the hit points to do that, so. The doors really inhibit your movement, and one thing you don't want to have happen is to be kind of jammed up next to a door, and then the bad guy just comes in and shoots you. So I need to figure out a way to speed this up. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the Rodian Blaster for Hire, and I'm going to move him one, two, three. That opens this door. Then I'm going to move him for a second move, one. So he's adjacent to these two doors. That means they're both open. So that allows Vigo to go one, two, because those doors are open, three, four, five. That door is open because the bartender's there. Six, and then he can go one, two, two. Yeah, two because he's going diagonal. And that opens this door. And that is his turn. And that is his turn. Now I will bring up one rule which may come into play here is that if you have a character who is in cover, like Vigo is currently in cover behind the bartender, then you can't shoot at him if there's someone else closer. And I guess this counts as cover too. This is a solid pillar. Okay, so that is uh, turn one and everybody's moved. So not we'll... much happened. Not much happened. Pawns moving around the board. Okay, ready for some initiative? I have a 17. You got initiative. Yeah, I think I'm gonna to try to position the bodyguard here. So she's, the door is open. She's gonna go one, two, three. That opens that door. And then Vigo is gonna go one, two, the door is open, three, four. So that's these two. This door is open, and this is a solid pillar, and they're kind of hanging out here, trying to protect Vigo. So now it's the Mandalorian killers, the bounty hunter and the gunslinger. Did you bring a cooler for Vigo's head when you're going to haul it back? No, we brought some carbonite. Okay. you got. Oh, you have a mobile carbonite immersion truck out front. I do. To, okay. We parked it out back with the other vehicles so it would be less conspicuous. Okay. It's like a it's like a snow cone truck or something like that. Yes. Okay. All right. So what are the Mandalorians going to do? They have overwhelming firepower, and depending on whether someone's activated or not, they can do a lot of extra damage with their special abilities. But I think the one way that I might be able to squeak out survival is if I can sort of overwhelm them or get them in and box them in and get them in a crossfire, and get some lucky die rolls. If you if you do a twenty natural twenty when you're uh, Rolling your attack, it's a critical hit, it's double damage, and if you roll a one, it's a critical miss. Okay, killers, what are you gonna do? Okay, the gunslinger's gonna start out, the door's open there. It's gonna go two. Door opens. Door opens. 
One, two, that door's already open. Three, and then that door is open. Right. And that is the gunslinger's move. My bounty hunter can go right through the doors. Right. One, two, three, four, five. Right. And he's gonna attack the assassin. Okay. So the bounty hunter is attacking the Aqualish assassin. Your attack is, is 13. Plus 13, yeah. It's plus 13. My defense is only 15. So you gotta roll a d20, add 13 to the result, and get better than a 15. And you got an 11 plus 13 is 24. So yeah, you got the assassin. And how much damage do you do? 20. 20. And the assassin has 20 hit points. You, you gut shot him with a laser at close range. And so that is the end of the Aqualish assassin. So that is my two guys. All right. You have one left. Right. I have the Rhodian blaster for hire. And he is going to, uh, yeah, he's going to use his blaster for hire and shoot at the bounty hunter. And he does have one special ability. He's only a 13-point guy, um, only 10 hit points. But he has one special ability that's dead eye. On this character's turn, if he doesn't move, he gets plus 10 damage. So he is going to shoot at the bounty hunter. His uh, attack is only plus 5. What's your defense? 19. Your defense is 19. So I need to roll this die, I need to add five and get a 19 or better. 18. So you did. So I did. And since he didn't move, he gets plus 10 on his damage. So his normal damage is 20, plus 10 is 30, off of your total of 120. So just a scratch. All right. It just barely warms up your Mandalorian armor. So that is the turn. Right. So at least the Rhodian Blaster for Hire got a shot in. But the bartender is done. You killed Wally. <laughs> okay, time for some initiative. Yes. Seven. Eighteen. 18. All right. All right, do you wish to move first or have me move first? So I think I will take initiative on this one. Okay. Don't need any more Deadeye attacks. So I'm going to move the Gunslinger first. Um, because she gets extra bonus if she's attacking someone who has not activated yet. Okay. So she's going to move up here so there's nothing in her way. And she has an attack of plus 9 and an extra plus 4, so plus 13. Okay, so she gets a plus 4 attack bonus because he has not activated yet. And his defense is 15, and so your total attack with all, all the additions and everything is what? Plus 13. Okay. So you have to roll a die and uh, get better than a 15, adding 13. Seven. So you rolled a seven plus 13. Okay, so you got him. Her damage is only 10, though. His uh, hit points are only 10. All so right. he was kind of a glass cannon. So that is the end of the blaster for hire, but at least he got a shot off. He did some good damage before That's he right. went down. So he did yeah. earn, his, earn his keep. In this case, Greedo did shoot first. Yes. <laughs> Here, you can keep that on your side. All right, so they're blazing away through the hallways of the cantina. So that is the uh, Mandalorian gunslinger, took out the blaster for hire, and now we have the bounty hunter. And what's he gonna do? He's actually gonna just move over here for the time being. All right. Because he heard some rumblings over there. Let's see what right. they're gonna do. All right. Yeah, now it gets a little bit tricky, do I? Uh, Try to try to navigate these doors somehow in an advantageous way. So this door is open. I guess Beagle will go here, here for two. That opens this door. And then he can go here for two. And he's going to park. And then she is going to go through there, through there and park and just leave both doors open because that yeah. door's already open if you wanted to go in there right okay so now this door is open and that door is open and so that is that turn all right time for some initiative yes things are going to get dicey soon 11 
one. one. What are you going to do? Yeah, it's really hard to take on two gunslingers at the same time. Let's see what I can do here, though. Vigo is going to go here. So that opens this door. And he's going to go here. Then the bodyguard is going to go one, two. If I can hit one of your guys with the whip, which has a range of two, and they haven't activated yet, I can paralyze them if they don't make a save. But I don't think I can maneuver that right now. I think if I went through there, then it would just be a hail of gunfire. The other thing she can do is if she's adjacent to um, Vigo and he takes a hit, she can absorb the damage. And they're both evasive, so if you're firing at a distance, they can dodge on 11+. plus. Okay, so what are those brazen Mandalorians going to do? The gunslinger is going to move first. Two. Okay, that opens the door. And then the Mandalorian is going to shoot at the bodyguard. Okay. So the uh, gunslinger is going to shoot at the uh, bodyguard. bodyguard. Okay. And her defense is um, 18. So I get plus nine. So I need a nine or better. And I got six. it. Oh, that sorry. Six. Okay. Sorry, so it I looks missed. like a nine, but because of the dot placement, that it indicates is a, miss. a six. So okay. yeah. Okay. Well, that's okay. The door is open now. That was the my main goal. The door is open, right. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Okay. The bounty hunter is going to shoot at Vigo. Okay. And because Vigo is a special character, I get plus four to my attack. Okay, since Vigo is a special character and you're a bounty hunter, that gives you a plus four to your attack. And since he's adjacent to me, he also cannot evade. Right. Because okay. I've got him by the jacket tails. Okay, you're, you're stepping on his jacket, yep. so he can't dance around quite as much. Right. So his attack is plus 13. With the added plus 4, it's plus 17. What's his defense? Uh, Vigo's defense is 19. So I need a 2 or better. 17. Okay, you got him. So 20 damage. What 20 damage. The bodyguard is going to absorb that. Okay, so, so how she's, much? She's got 60, so minus 20, that brings her down to 40. Okay. She takes the hit. Look out, Vigo! So we roll for initiative. You got a 13. You got a 10. I guess, what are okay. you going to do? Now, here's, the, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. Because uh, she's adjacent to him, then she's got to attack him. Vigo could try to move out of being adjacent to the bounty hunter, but that would give the bounty hunter a free attack uh, as he's moving away. Same with the bounty, the uh, bodyguard. Same with the bodyguard. First thing first, the bodyguard is going to lash the uh, bounty hunter with her whip. Her attack is 12. Defense is 19. Defense is 19. So she needs a 7 or better, and she, she got, got a 19. Okay, so she does 20 points of damage okay. to the bounty hunter. So he's down to 70. He's down to 70. And he's going to make a save of 11 or better to avoid being paralyzed. Okay, so i got to roll an 11 or better. Yeah, roll 11 or better to avoid being paralyzed this turn, and you didn't do it. So That means I'm done? You're done. Okay. All right. But it's just one turn, right? It's just this turn. So now that Vigo doesn't have to face the wrath of the bounty hunter's guns, he's going to unload his own pistols into the bounty hunter, and his attack is plus six. He gets two shots, though. What is your um, defense? Nineteen. Nineteen. So he gets two shots. He just needs a 13 or better. That's a double. So it's 20 points. So that's, yeah, 20 points. And an 11 is a miss. So that is Vigo. So now I get to try to do something with my gunslinger. So okay. the gunslinger has an attack of plus nine. Who has the lower defense? Um, oh, I have to shoot at that one. Yeah, I think you do have to shoot at this one because the other one's, the other, in, the other one's in cover. Okay, so the, I guess I'm going the bodyguard. The bodyguard has a defense of 18. And she's got evade. Because the bounty hunter is adjacent, she can't evade the bounty hunter. But the gunslinger is not adjacent, so she can't evade. Well, in that case, 
Okay, move forward. Okay, well that takes that away. Yes, so at least I have a chance. And, and one critical miss. All right, so the bounty hunters suck. <laughs> they are well, sucking today. They are not having you did, very you good luck. You already murdered the whole uh, cantina staff, so. Well, I, just even the odds. <laughs> it's only two to two now. Yeah, but they're, uh, let's see. These two together are 44 points, and the uh, bounty hunter by himself is 47 points. But you've already whittled the bounty hunter down to... Whittled him down a little bit, but a then lot. you killed I think two you, guys. Okay. I think you have the same amount of hit points left, though, don't you? The bodyguard has 40 hit points left, and Vigo has 50. So you have 10 points less. Okay. I got a 7. And that is a 9. Right. So I will take initiative. You'll take initiative. I definitely will take initiative. So what's going on with the Mandalorians? So the gunslinger is going to attack the bodyguard. Okay, gunslinger attacking the bodyguard. And since the bodyguard hasn't activated yet, the gunslinger gets plus 4, so that's plus 13. Okay, her defense is 18, so you need 5 or better. One, critical miss. Okay, but she has two attacks when she doesn't move. Okay. So we'll give this another shot and hopefully... Um, no critical miss. Yeah, hopefully she can do some... She's really not doing her training very well. Another critical miss. That's another critical miss. What are the odds of that? Not, not My high. dice are not happy with me today. The bounty hunter is going to attack Vigo because he gets a plus four. So the bounty hunter is now... He's shaking off his paralysis. Uh, Vigo's defense is 19. So, plus 17 against Vigo. Okay, so the bounty hunter shooting Vigo. Okay, so 18. 18. That's a hit. So, that's no a solid evasions. hit. Does he get to shoot twice, too? He does also. Okay, so how many points does he do? 20. 20. The bounty hunter will take that hit. So, that takes her from 40 down to 20. Again, one more time. Same thing. 19. Okay, so that's another 20. Vigo will take that one because that would kill the bodyguard. So, let's see, Vigo is down from 50 to 30. Has the um, has the gunslinger taken any hits? No. No. How many hit points does the... They both have 50. They both have 50. Oh, let's try to get the, uh, try to get the bounty hunter. Okay. So, she's going to use her whip. Her attack is plus 12, and what is his defense? 19. 19, so 7 or better. 12, so got him. And she does 20, right? Does 20. Okay, so bounty hunter is down to 30. Uh, bounty hunter is down to 30. Vigo is going to take his two shots, so his attack is plus 6 only. What's your defense again? Who are you going for? The bounty hunter. 19. So he's got to get a 13 or better, but he gets two shots. So that is a 12, so that's a near miss. It goes whizzing by the helmet. And two. All, All right. right, good, so good. If so if Vigo does not hit. Vigo and the gunslinger are in the same boat. Right. So that's this activation. All right, ready for some initiative? Yes. I got a seven. I got a 19. And you get a 19. I'm definitely going to go first. Okay. <laughs> On this, this is getting... Very hair raising. <laughs> Close quarters. They're in the hallway, just blazing away. Yeah. So the gunslinger's going to take the first shot at the bodyguard. Okay. She's only got 20 points left. Yeah, well, I only do 10 points of damage, so. And her defense is 18. Okay. And I get plus 13. Right. So you got her. Okay, so 10 points. 10 points. And the and gunslinger your, gets to go again. Get your second shot. If you succeed with this one, you'll have killed her. Okay. Five. And five, 18, and her defense is 18, so, so that's enough. Okay. So just barely. And she can't evade because you're adjacent. So that is the end of the bodyguard. She took a bunch. She absorbed a lot of damage, so. And she paralyzed the bounty hunter. She paralyzed the bounty hunter. She okay. did it. She definitely did her job. She earned her keep. Yeah. All right. Okay. And the so. bounty hunter is going to take his two shots. All right. And since it's against Vigo, he gets plus four, so that's plus 17. All right. And Vigo's defense is not that. I was 19, so two or better. It's not critical. Miss. And 17, so you got him. It's 20. 20, so that takes Vigo down from 30 to 10. And you're going to shoot again. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, critical miss. <laughs> critical miss at an inopportune time. At a very inopportune because time. Because they could have wiped him out. All you would have needed was to roll a two, I think, right? Yeah, just a, a two. A two, and, and you I, didn't quite I do it. Didn't so know. that's the fickle finger of fate sometimes. Okay, so Vigo gets two shots. He's going to try to unload at the bounty hunter and at least get a moral victory here. His um, attack is plus six, and your defense is what? 19. You need a 13 or better. Ooh, just made it. Okay, so that's 10. Down to 20. And 14. That's down another to 10. 10. Okay. Down to 10. It's going to come down to this activation, I okay. think. One more initiative roll. I got a 14. I you got, got an 18. 18. All okay, right. I think I'm going to go first. Okay. Bounty Hunter after Vigo. Okay. So he gets plus 17. Okay, and he got him. That was a very close fight, <laughs> though, man. One more hit on me would have taken out the bounty hunter. Well, uh, that would have been, I think, a moral victory. At least these guys put up a decent fight. The bodyguard did her best. But it's hard when you're trapped in a corridor with a couple of uh, Mandalorian pistoleros with, uh, you know, dual fire. Yeah, once I get into toe-to-toe -to -toe range, it helps that they can't evade anymore. Yeah. No, I could have tried to step back, but then you would have gotten a free attack. So once their hit points got whittled down a little bit, that didn't seem to be that wise. But yeah, it didn't seem to be Especially when prudent. he could do so two attacks. I was hoping to kind of get in there and paralyze a little bit, and uh, I did once. Yeah, the, but, uh, the misses hurt on both our sides. They do. All right, so anyway, you succeeded in your mission. You got... Uh, uh, Vigo and Carbonite. Bruised up a little bit, but now, yeah, you can take him out to the snow cone machine and uh, freeze him up and take him back to wherever he's going, take back his husk. Okay, folks, that is our great uh, Star Wars miniatures, Anchorhead Cantina, Mandalorians versus Black Sun scenario. And as I said, uh, in honor of the Mandalorian uh, TV show coming out here in about three weeks, I guess, uh, we're going to have uh, another scenario, probably featuring the ATAT -AT, uh, Colossal Walker and... Uh, and a whole host of Mandalorians. And then I got in the back of my mind some idea about a uh, sort of a Butch Cassidy Sundance Kid scenario with a couple of Mandalorians, maybe a Mandalorian and an IG-11 versus a bunch of stormtroopers. But we'll just have to see. And the AT-AT? -AT. No. Uh, well, the AT-AT -AT would be one scenario. But then did you ever see Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid? Kind of at the end, they're fighting, you know, the whole Bolivian army almost. So imagine... Uh, the Mandalorian and his robot sidekick versus a, a legion of stormtroopers. That would be to interesting. See just how many they can take out before, before they're uh, uh, overrun. <laughs> before they're overrun. Well, folks, uh, thanks very much for watching. As always, we hope you enjoyed this. And if you like the things we do here, please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please give this video a big thumbs up. And of course, please visit us online at our website, skirmishwargames.com.